Good evening and welcome to our office of evening prayer. And I trust and pray that you had a beautiful, wonderful day. God feeds his people with the bread of life. Let us worship and praise him. Lord, open our lips that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Come bless the Lord. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you who by night stand in the house of our God, Lift up your hands towards the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. So let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our appointed psalms for this evening are Psalms 12 and 13, and it can be found on page 617 in our prayer books. Psalm. 12. Help, Lord, for there is no one God. Help, Lord, for there is not one godly man left. The faithful have vanished from among the children of men. Everyone tells lies to his neighbor. They flatter with their lips, but speak from a double heart. If only the Lord would cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaks so proudly. They say, by our tongues we shall prevail. Our lips are our servants who is Lord over us. Because of the oppression of the poor, because of the groaning of the needy, I will arise, says the Lord, and set them in safety from those that snarl after them. The words of the Lord are pure, as silver refined in a crucible, as gold that is seven times purified in the fire. You will surely guard us, O Lord, and shield us from this evil generation. Though the ungodly strut on every side, Though the vilest of men have mastery of mankind, how long, O Lord, will you so utterly forget me? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I suffer anguish in my soul and be so grieved in my heart day and night? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me, O Lord, my God, and answer me. Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep in death, lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him, lest my foes exult at my overthrow. Yet I put my trust in your unfailing love. O let my heart rejoice in your salvation, and I will make my song to the Lord because he deals so bountifully with me. Glory 
to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our lesson is written in Matthew chapter 16, and I read from verse 13 to verse 20. Matthew chapter 16, reading from verse 13. Peter's confession of Christ. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea in Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this, not, this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the key. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. Here ends the lesson. This evening our reading continues. For this past week we have been seeing how Jesus speaks to his disciples, how he teaches, and how he tells them parables about faith, having faith in God, putting their trust and their hope in God. Yesterday we saw the Pharisees and the Sadducees, how they challenged Jesus. And so tonight as Jesus continues with his disciples, he asks them this burning question, who do people say I am? And the disciples respond, some say you are Elijah, some say you are some prophet, some even say you are John the Baptist. And then Jesus turns around and he asks his disciples, those closest to him, who do you say I am? Who do you say I am, Jesus asks. It was a moment of truth, a very special moment in his disciples' relationship with their master. And of course, Simon speaks up, you are the Messiah, the Christ, the son of the living God. And friends, this is a huge step for Simon, Peter, the rock and the rest of the disciples. It is in this instance that they recognize Jesus as Lord. It is in this instance that they are set apart, making this wonderful statement of Christ. And I wonder this evening if Jesus were to ask us, who do you say I am? I wonder what your response will be. Something that you and I need to ponder about, something that we need to pray about. 
because our response has dire consequences. For if we say we, you are the King, you are the Lord, we recognize you as our Savior, then it means, dear brothers and sisters, that we have to follow our Savior, that we have to be obedient to our Savior as we recognize him as our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And if we do not know Jesus, then of course we're not following him, not obeying him, and acknowledging him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And that will have eternal consequences for today and for the life to come. I trust and pray that as we read God's word and as we speak to God, that he will give us peace as to who he is and who we say that he is. May God be gracious to us as we continue to speak to him, that we too would come to a point in our lives like Simon, where we say, you are the Lord, the Son of God. Amen. The song of Simeon. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and to the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. The Apostles' Creed we say together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so, Lord, we thank you for your word today. And as you ask your disciples, you ask of us, who do we think and say that you are? And Lord, as your children, we acknowledge you as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one sent by God to take away the sin of the world. And so, Lord, we pray and ask that you help us to live holy and godly lives as we acknowledge you as Lord and Savior. So continue, Lord, to work within our hearts that we may be used for your glory and your purposes. So come. Spirit of God, lead and guide us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Lord God, we ask you to give us your blessing to your church holiness, to the world peace, to this nation justice, and to all people knowledge of your law. Keep safe our families, protect the weak, heal the sick, comfort the dying, and bring us all to a joyful resurrection. We ask these things through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who wake or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, give rest to the weary, sustain the dying, calm the suffering, and pity the distressed, all for your love's sake. O Christ, our Redeemer. Lighten our darkness, Lord, and by your great mercy defend us in all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen. I trust and pray that you will have a peaceful night's rest. God bless and goodbye.